Hey guys, hope you all have been well. Welcome back to my channel. On today's video, I'm going to be ice watching, you heard that right, ice watching my MAC Matte eyeshadows. I do have a couple other ones, but these are the ones that are currently still available. You can buy them as refill pans for $8, which is what I personally would recommend. The reason I wanted to do this video is because I always get asked to do more matte content. I'm constantly thinking about how I can change up the matte content that I'm giving you. And what I haven't done just yet are eye swatches of my MAC eyeshadows. I do a lot of them on hand, but how accurate that is, I mean, use your best judgment. It makes so much more sense to put it on your eyes where it's supposed to go. So that is what I am doing today. There, There's a bunch here. We have two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. So let's all cross our fingers that I survive this without getting injured. So if you happen to be interested in what these eyeshadows look like on my NC35 to NC37 skin tone, I hope you decide to stay tuned. We're going to get into some swatching. And the first shade I'm going to be swatching is a Powder Kiss Soft Matte Eyeshadow in these bags are designer. Sort of this yellowy muted eyeshadow. And I want to put this primarily on my crease and as my transition because I'm sure that's what many of us would use it for. So if you're interested in a mustardy yellow eyeshadow, this is one I would recommend. It blends very well as you can see. On my complexion, this is much more a trend transition shade so the one that goes higher up than it is a crease shade but there is the first eyeshadow these bags are designer next up we have natural wilderness and it's kind of this swampy green almost looks a little poopy and this does have really tiny specks of glitter but it doesn't really show up on the lids i'm not really sure why companies do this to be honest for me it really doesn't do anything there's no difference on it on my lids at least but if you are into grungy eyeshadows this is probably a good one to check out it can blend out to be very subtle this isn't the best or smoothest formula in my opinion i feel like if you don't have your lid properly set it can be a little streaky or patchy so that's something to be aware of there you have the second shade in natural wilderness eyeshadow number three is going to be texture this is a velvet finish though it does have those tiny specks of glitter it doesn't really show up on the lid it kind of comes off like on the verge of a satin but in my opinion is very wearable as a transition or crease shade as i'm doing this i want to mention that i kind of paired the eyeshadows to be close in color against each other so that you can determine which shade is the one you're looking for i'm not applying eyeshadow at whim there is purple to the pairings of these. If you're into medium warm tone browns, then this is definitely one to check out. So there you have texture. Wipe off this brush and a very close color to it is Saddle, which is personally my favorite mid-tone warm brown. It is this shade right here. And compared to texture, this one here is Saddle this one here is texture so they're very similar i personally like saddle a little bit more and it is an entirely matte shade look at the pigment on the brush and that is the case with texture as well i would use saddle in the crease more than i would as a transition shade because i tend to use soft brown and saddle together and soft brown is my transition shade so here's the final look for saddle and i know they look very similar just kind of going between them so make your best judgment in what you're looking for so texture is slightly lighter with specks of glitter in it where saddle is a medium almost medium dark brown shade that is entirely matte eyeshadow number five is uninterrupted and this is another completely matte shade and i would describe this color as a muddied brown so if you want something a bit more neutral as compared to the previous two which were more warm then i would suggest maybe looking into this one again very easy to work with easy to blend obviously none of these shades are horrible but i think some do perform a little bit better than the others so here we have uninterrupted 
Next up, we have another Powder Kiss Soft Matte Eyeshadow in What Clout? Exclamation point. If you're thinking this looks like the previous two, this is slightly lighter than those. So as you can see, this serves more as a transition shade and a crease shade compared to them. So this is more of a light, medium, warm brown. Oh, so good as a transition shade. So here you have What Clout? After talking about this a few times previously, here we have Soft Brown. This is my favorite transition shade, and the way I would describe it is just the perfect neutral brown. It really looks like shadow against my complexion, one of the best shadows to blend into others. So here we have Soft Brown. Powder Kiss Soft Matte Eyeshadow in My Tweety. If I'm not mistaken, this is a Powder Kiss lipstick as well, and it's a warm, medium, neutral pink. I like this as my transition shade, but I love neutral pinks. You guys know this. Anything that runs the lines of a soft bridal look, I'm all about. So this color just fits the bill. So here it is, My Tweety. This next one here is in Royal Rendezvous. It looks a little milky in a way, but this I would describe as a matte, cool tone purple. And in terms of depth, I would describe it more as a light medium. If you like more of a neutral purple look than brown or pink or peach, then this is a really good transition shade. That's how I tend to use it. It builds up nicely. There's no patchiness. It's just a solid eyeshadow. So there we have it. That is Royal Rendezvous. And kind of riding on that purple wave, we have Ho, which is one of the best, I'm telling you, the best MAC eyeshadow formulas. This is up to par with Saddle and Soft Brown. So if you're into mid-tone cool purples, this is definitely one worth giving a shot at. And this is a color that I would use as my crease shade as opposed to a transition. So pairing these two together would be a good combo if you prefer to use more neutral purple as your everyday colors. So here's the final look of Ho. Last two shades. This next one is Swiss Chocolate and I would describe it as a medium, even medium deep red and brown. Really good crease shade and maybe I should just show you that first. See that pigment? Build up the intensity and then blending it out. It's just got a nice punch to it. And there you have it. This is Swiss chocolate. Not patchy, very smooth, and very pigmented. And the last shade, we have a sandstone, and I would describe this as a medium gray. I'm not much of a cool tone lover, especially with grays and blacks and things of that sort. So just having one in my collection was good enough for me. For me, this is more of a transition shade. So if I wanted to do a cool tone look, I would go to this as my transition and then maybe pick from other eyeshadow palettes to build onto the look. So here you have the final eyeshadow, thank goodness, in a sandstone. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining me in this video. I hope you found it informative and helpful in any way. MAC isn't known for their pre-built palettes, so looking into their singles is probably the best way to go. And I'm hoping that this gives you a better representation of these shades so that you can make your best judgment in case you're on the lookout for some new MAC singles. No need for me to post this look on Instagram, but I will be listing and linking all of the eyeshadows that I use in the description box down below. Till the next video, I hope you all are doing well, taking great care of yourselves. I will see you all next time. Bye guys!